beautiful day, Friday. Depends on where you live, right? <laughs> beautiful day. Hope you're all uh, doing well. Good to see everybody today. We could talk about the market for uh, a, a few minutes. And uh, uh, it feels uh, relaxing in the sense that you know, news is over for now. If we recap, um, most of the big news in terms of earnings, Fed announcements, a lot of the fireworks, uh, wouldn't you agree, is done right now. Next week is kind of a slow uh, news week. Uh, the week after, as you get to Feb 14, you get into the CPI, and that probably will be some of the next events that will uh, maybe make a difference in the market. Uh, there's no Fed speakers next week, which is good. Um, Michael says SPX broke 4,100. Yeah, and, and, and it's really, you know, when, when, you, when you look at uh, SPX, you know, basically in the last month, uh, in the last month in SPX, we've basically gone up about uh, 350 points, right? So whatever that is, 6% uh, or maybe a little bit more one way. <laughs> and, and the one thing, you know, when you look at it as an SPX chart, here's the last month or so. But the other thing is, you know, when you're looking at, you don't normally associate an up move, right? When you think of, you know, the last eight, 10 years in the market, we've had an upward moving market, uh, slowly trending most of the time. But you say, when does there, use, you know, are there any up moves that concern you? Are there any up moves that you're more a bit frightened of, especially for a range bound trader? And I'd say when we're coming out of a correction or when we've had a good down move and we're snapping back, you know, those up moves can be more, more kick to it. That's why you see here the ATR is, uh, has been which, which usually goes up when the market's going down, but you can see here the ATR has been popping up a little bit. And that's just because you're getting some speed to the upside. ATR is basically saying, you know, it's measuring the distance between the high and the low on a particular vehicle, in this case, SPX. But you can see here in a mostly up market at one down day, but you're getting some kind of bigger size candles. That just means there's a, uh, wider distance between the high and the low. And the wider the handles, we're range bound traders we don't like, but it's been one way, right? It's kind of been one way movement. Um, and uh, so, you know, what do you think here? We, we've, you know, a lot of exuberance here. Uh, you got the Fed news, you know, None of us really know. All I look at, you know, try to make a decision on range bound or speculative trades are what's in front of us, right? And, and, and what's in front of us right now, you know, in a way, I'm looking, you know, I'm from the range bound trades, I'm looking for range bound trades that would be conducive to what's going on. And, 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 and just for a little perspective, does anybody, does anybody not understand what I mean by range bound trades? Range bound trades would be trades that <clears throat> generally benefit uh, and not too much movement. Uh, they're positive theta trades that the options I'm selling have more extrinsic value than the options I'm buying. But when we look at this 
And, you know, when I'm looking to put a trade on now, and in general, there's a guideline for range bound trades, which would be some type of the ones we do with some type of a calendar. I'm going to give you maybe a different type of a calendar today. Uh, some type of a butterfly. There's many different versions. Um, some type of a iron condor or credit spread or double diagonal or blah, blah, blah. You know, but they're range bound stuff, right? And, but when I look at this, I'm really two things. Number one, I'm making my decision if I want to put a range bound trade on maybe, you know, most of the stuff we do would be like 15 to 40 days, right? And then maybe a smaller, smaller percentage, a very small part might be same day trades, right? And, and, and those have been very popular, but they're very dicey, right? How many of you are hooked on doing trades that expire the same day or the, in one day in the future? How many of you got kind of hooked on, and that's good, that's a good adrenaline thing, but it's like anything else, right? Um, you do a smaller size than your normal stuff, and then, you know, you see what your personality likes. But if you look at the last couple months in the market, so when I'm making a decision, to play, I, I really will look at maybe the last six, seven weeks in the market, right? And then the last six, seven weeks in the VIX, right? The last six, seven weeks in the VIX is probably the volatility 17 to 25. And so with VIX right now at Eighteen eighty three, yeah, you know, we're we're kind of in the low end of the range. So, you know, if you buy into kind of reversion to the mean in in, in volatility, which I do, you know, strategies that would benefit if volatility went up, or strategies that would benefit if the market went down and volatilities went up. In other words, how many of you think when the VIX is low? Yes or no, and, and I know there's quite a few students here that are are folk who are do stuff with shared and mentoring, so they uh, they probably know the answer. All the time. But how many of you would say, you know, generally a strategy like a butterfly benefits when the volatility goes down? That would you consider a butterfly when the VIX is low? Well. The answer is, you know, the butterfly is a flexible strategy. It depends on what type, right? If you put in something like a balanced butterfly that we would call a balanced butterfly, which would be, you know, if SPX is at, uh, uh, where's SPX? Let's just say, I'm just gonna, let's say close to 4,100. So if you put on a butterfly like this, buy one, you know, uh, 44,050, sell to 4,100s, and buy one 4,150. Now, that's a butterfly. The distance between the short and the in the money call is 50. The distance between the short and the out of the money call is 50. Well, that's a balanced butterfly. We say, for those that might say, you know what, you don't want to do a short Vegas strategy like a butterfly when the VIX is low here. Well, if you put a balanced butterfly on it right now and the market dropped 30 points, you probably make 7 or 8% before you can say potato chip. And you say, well, why? I don't get it. Well, the Greeks, this is a little bit short delta. So the short delta of this will 
offset any volatility problems usually. So, so even in a low vol environment, would I consider a butterfly? The answer is, yeah, a type of butterfly, but you know, butterfly doesn't include all butterflies. So that would be a balanced. Well, what if I said, you know what? How many of you think that in the next two to three weeks, we'll continue maybe at a slower pace, but we'll continue trending up? How many of you are in that camp? All right, so if you're in that camp that you're still drinking the Kool-Aid, right? I'm joking. I'm half joking. Um, if you're still drinking the Kool-Aid, right? Here's a range-bound trade that would be, they're both range-bound trades. They're both, you know, within a delta or delta and a half. So I would consider in a vehicle like SPX relatively delta neutral. But in that case, so there's a little flexibility. You would do a butterfly like this, and this would be in calls. You'd buy the same in the money call. You'd say, sell the same two at the money calls. But instead of buying the 4150, you might buy the 4140s. So this will be a little bit delta short, you know, maybe one to two delta short for each contract. This would be unbalanced or broke a wing butterfly. Your downside risk is 50. Your upside risk is 40. This may be one to two deltas long, right? So they're both called butterflies, right? But one will be a little bit different experience for the downside. One will be a little bit different experience for the upside. Now you can put either one on. I mean, you know, ultimately, ultimately in the range bound world, risk management is going to be, is really what's going to determine if you're still around after a couple of years, right? All right, picking direction on a short-term basis, would you say that's easy or hard? Yeah, hard. And if anybody lies to me here and says it's easy, then they're, they're at the wrong webinar, right? If someone's here saying picking direction short-term is easy, where should they be right now? Should they be in a webinar like this? Where should they be? Where should they be? They should be on their own island somewhere, right? In other words, if I, as much as I love all of you, if I could pick the market direction every week successfully, as much as I love Stephen and Will Joe and all of you, I'm done. I'm on some weird island, right? Uh, hanging out, right? Um, so, so a couple things just, just to throw out there. A couple things that are in my mind today, and some of this may be different for some of you, some of it may not, but like, for example, let's just take the basic, how many are familiar with calendar trades? How many of you familiar with calendar trades? But here's the key. And let's, let's make sure we're all on planet earth for a second. A calendar trade is a range bound trade, right? So what a calendar trade is, the mechanics of it, okay? In this example, we're at 4146. So I'm gonna buy one, here's an example of one. 
I'm going to buy one Feb 21. I'm going to buy an at the money call. I'm going to sell one Feb 17 at the money call. And it's a debit transaction, so it's near three, to, we'll call it three bucks. So this particular one costs you three bucks, 300 bucks. You put it on at the money, right? It's the 4145 strike. The blue line there, I'm using TD Ameritrade, think or swim, is the expiration graph. Our shortest Feb 17, that's two weeks away. And our long is uh, four days further out. And you can see the blue graph, the purple graph is expiration, but you can see over time, this purple line, as the market stays in a bit of a range, that purple line morphs into the blue line and you make money. And you say, well, how do you make money in a calendar? Well, you're selling a closer in expiration at the money. So you're selling and, and an at the money has the most extrinsic value. And then you're buying uh, an at the money option with more extrinsic value, but the expiration is four days later. So these, even though there's more extrinsic value in your lawn, these are going to decay more quicker. Why? Because they expire quicker. So generally this, you know, $3 debit that we pay will go up to $350 or $370. How does that happen? These will start losing value a lot quicker than these. You know, and as long as, if you're a visual person, as long as we're in this blue graph, right? You let this percolate like a good cup of Folgers coffee. My mom and dad would drink Folgers coffee. Is Folgers coffee still around? Uh, anybody still drink Folgers? Yeah. Uh, Bob says it's three days between optimum. No, and, and again, this is four days between. There's no optimum distance between the long and the short. The farther the long is from the short, it becomes more expensive. Um, generally, as the option volatility gets higher, um, then I would have more then I would have less distance between the long and the short. As the option volatility gets lower, I might have more distance between the long and the short. But, but again, it also gets more expensive. So if you're a smaller trader, you may want to keep the distance between the long and the short three or four days because it's cheaper. But with that being said, who can give me, there's only two reasons that determine, right? So today, right? What am I basing my decision on? If I wanted to do a calendar trade for monthly income or weekly income, which we do all the time, what are the only, there's many imaginary reasons, right? Right? What, what are the two main reasons to put on a calendar trade? What do you think? There is two reasons. So today, would I put a calendar? What, what, what are the two reasons you would put one on? What are the two reasons? There's only two reasons. Theta is just something you get, right? So there's many reasons, but I'll give you my top two reasons, right? There's two reasons that I will put on a, 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 generally that I'm looking to put a calendar on. Number one, I look at a chart last couple months or whatever, and I see some type of range bound activity. That's the main thing. Because wouldn't that make sense? If you're doing a range bound trade, now this is deep, right? You've got to go to MIT to figure this one out. If you're doing a range bound activity trade, wouldn't it make sense to make sure that maybe are you in a range bound 
environment. And what would you say? If you're looking at the last month or two, are we range bound? Right? I mean, wouldn't it make sense if you're going to put a range bound trade on, wouldn't it make sense to wouldn't you want the market range bound or a little bit? So not really. Yeah. So it's really not. We're in an uptrend. Now, now let me ask you a question. So number one in a calendar, can I fool myself into thinking there's some type of range bound? Now, now when you look at this range bound, and right now where I have my cursor, I'm looking at, I'll look at, uh, here's one month of activity. Is that uptrend fast or slow? Is that uptrend fast or slow? Is that uptrend fast or slow? So here's a month activity. In a month, we've gone from, in one month, if I go to January 3, from January 3, we closed at 38 and a quarter. So we're up about 325 points in a month. Now, I don't know what the expected move is for 30 days or, but uh, yeah, Alex, if you're signed up for this, I think Johnny will send you a, 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 if you're having trouble technically with this, you should be able to get access to a recording. So it's moving fast. So can I, can you do a can? Is it ideal to do a calendar when the market's moving fast? Yes or no? No, but I mean, I have no problem doing a calendar when the market's trending. I just, ideally, I like it a little slower than this. But as I'll get to the next point in a second volatility, um, I think that's fine. But I would do some, I might do a little bit smaller size because it doesn't mean that a calendar couldn't make good money right now. It just would mean it's, it's a little bit like wrestling with an alligator, right? And again, you can, you know, when you're looking at a calendar, I'm centering at 41.45 right now because that's where we're closest. If you had a little bit bullish tinge, you could set it up at 41.55 or whatever you wanted to. But you can still make money when it's trending. I mean, when you put any range bound trade on, is SPX going to sit there for, for two weeks? No. And, and, and generally, when I put it, we put a trade on, now this particular trade is uh, Feb 17 is the shorts, expires in two weeks. So I'm looking to stay in these trades generally about 20% of the duration. So if this is a 14 day trade, how long am I looking to stay in this? About three days or so. That's about it. Yeah. Um, yeah, Sid says a 30-day expected move. That's like a standard deviation and toss is 175 points. And we've moved, what did I say, 310. So... So that would be fast. We've kind of moved more than expectations. Uh, Alex says, correct me if I am wrong, time spreads is all about predicting forward volatility, not IV and historical. Um, I wouldn't say anything. I get concerned anytime I see times. If you said to me, time spreads is all about uh, back spreads is all about butterflies is all about that would concern me but um about predicting forward volatility i think there's some truth to that um i think there's some truth to that but um um even if you can't predict future volatility uh what what do you think is more important in calendars? Uh, what do you think is more important in calendars? Um, 
as far as affecting your trade, price or volatility? Those are your, your, your two big enemies. What, what do you think is more important? Price. Price. What else? Price. No, skew isn't. No. Skew isn't. Price. Right? So, so let me get it. The most important thing that I would consider some type of range. And because we're moving, because we're moving a little too fast right now, which is very normal. When we're coming out of a downturn, this type of movement up is very normal. You're going to get some speed, right? But number two, number two, Thing to consider with calendars. One is range, as far as most important. You know, for me, I look at the VIX range. Over the last six, seven weeks, the range in VIX is somewhere in the 17s, roughly to 25. And so right now, VIX is 19. So would I consider calendars? Are we in the lower end of the range? Yeah, we consider calendars, right? And 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 I thought I'd get into more today, but I'll at least I'll finish this thought and then and then give you another idea what I was looking at. So calendars. Now, how many of you think when you're doing calendars? And again, this particular example is a 14 day on our shorts. Our longs are uh, 18 days, right? How many of you think I put, so price movement, volatility, how many of you think skews, the difference in volatility between your long and your short is real important with calendars? Skew. Here's my two cents, right? And, and, and a lot of people go on rabbit holes with skews, but for the most part with calendars, right? Right, is the most part with scale calendars, these are my two priorities. The level of VIX, right? Do I look at the skew level? I'm aware of it, but it's maybe top five, but it's not, these are my two main, right? Because you got to understand something, right? Skews are basically telling you what's going on in market conditions, but like, like let's just take, for example, it says diagonal, but this is a calendar of the way because Calendars are, I'm buying the long further out than my short, right? So calendars, I'm buying my long further out than my short. But here's the thing, and we'll get into skews a second, and then I'll kind of wrap this up in the next 10 minutes. But so definition of calendar, this is calls, is I'm buying the further out that I'm selling, and it's going to be the same strike. That's your definition of a calendar. Now, the volatility that I'm buying here in my lawn is 16.8. The volatility of my short is 18.15. So for you skew guys out there, is this good or bad? This is good or bad? It's good. Well, let me ask you a question. So, so again, does the skew and this particular calendar, if I'm determining to do it, I'm looking, the VIX is in the low end of the range. I assess the range boundness in the market. Am I getting caught up in the skews? No. Do, am I aware of the skews? Yeah. But, but it's not. 
it's not anywhere as important as those first two factors. Because you have to remember, when you have skews, you know, like when you have like, this is a, this is a 14 day option. This is an 18 day option. When you get options that are, you know, two weeks or less, you get skews all the time, right? And what are those skews based on, right? What are the skews based on when you're talking about options 15 days and less? What is it based on? One thing. I mean, what is it based on? What are skews based on? What is it based on? It's based on how the market's moving, right? Right, it's, it's just saying if the market's, you know, if, if the market's moving a ton, you might have a, you know, more of a skew. But, but here's the thing, if there's a big difference between your long and the short, there's a reason, right? Right, there, there's, you know, Alex is bringing in these big words that would be tough in spelling bees, isn't he? Backwardization and contagion, conta uh, what's the word? Con, uh, con something, contango. It's always, I associate it with dancing, contango. But when we're in an upward market, right? Your long is, if you're buying a 30 day option and you're selling a 15 day option, typically, or buying a 40 day option and selling a 20 day option in an upward trending market, you're always gonna be in contango. You're always gonna be, your long option is gonna be higher than your short, isn't it? Just the way it is. So what, what I'm saying is if you see a big juicy skew, it's just like in earnings, could you go in, could you go in the day before earnings and sell a hundred volatility and then go out a week and buy uh, 50 volatility. Could you do that? Could you go in before a lot of stocks? Could you have gone in yesterday with Amazon and you could have done all that? But you say, for all you skewers out there, why, why is Amazon company and Apple being so kind to you? What, why, why would the options market say, come on in guys, I'm gonna let you buy a 50 volatility and sell a hundred. Do they like you? What, why are they doing that? The bigger the skew, you ever hear this saying? I'm gonna get some t-shirts. The bigger the skew, the bigger the, the bigger the skew, the bigger the, the bigger the skew, the bigger the, come on. You don't know that song. The bigger the skew, the bigger the move. The bigger the skew, the bigger the move. The bigger the skew, the bigger the move. Right, so bottom line is, I don't look at the skew. I mean, it is what it is. I'm just saying what, what the market's doing. But if there's a big fat skew, what they're telling you is, Mike, there's a big skew, right? They're saying, hey, Mike, if you go on the west side of Chicago at two in the morning for me, right? And pick up my sweater that I lost, I'll give you 500 bucks. And you think, why is Dan giving me 500 bucks to go pick up his sweater on the west side of Chicago at two in the morning? Well, because there's a good chance, what are the probabilities of Mike making it out of the west side of Chicago at two in the morning? Is it good or bad? Is Mike gonna make it out of the west side of Chicago at two in the morning? With No, so, so the, anyways, so, so this is the thing with the calendars. These are the things to focus on, right? I'm not saying skew, has no value, but it's not one of the two main reasons I do calendars, right? The other stuff, you know, again, because if, if the skews are too whacked out, you know, too big, you know, this is the main one for me. Is the market semi in a range? If it's moving too fast, it's going to be like wrestling with a big, strong alligator. So. With that being said, let me leave you just because we started this discussion on calendars. So if I'm putting a calendar on right now, 
Does everybody agree? And I'm going to move this to 4140. All right. Any questions on calendar before I tell you what I would consider today? Any questions on this calendar before I kind of, I'm going to tweak it to show you how I might trade it today. Now, the one thing, I'm just going to mention this today. We don't have enough time to get in all of it. How many people of you think if the volatility goes up, right? If VIX increases, is that good for a calendar? Like today, the VIX is increasing. Is that good or bad for a calendar? So you make money with a calendar if it stays in a range. So if it stays in the profitable area and the volatility goes up. Well, now, what are you basing that on that you make money if volatility goes up? What are you basing that on? What are you basing that on? If you went to your mailman, what are you, what are you going to tell them? About why? So it's Vega. So let's look at this. So this thing says, if the volatility of each of my two options goes up a point from where they're at, that I'd make 42 bucks or so, right? So are you making your assumption that if the market goes down and volatility goes up, are you making your assumption you make money from volatility? You're making your assumption on a totally theoretical calculation. Is that true or false? So you can't go to the bank and say, my VIX is up a point. Can you call Thinkorswim and say, hey, VIX is up a point. Give me my money, you thieves. You can't do that, right? First of all, options don't go up in synchronicity always, right? So if, you know, if your long volatility is 18.37 or your short is 18.4, 18 18 your long is 17, if VIX goes up a point, one might go up a half a point, one might go up a point, or one might go up a half a point, one might come down half a point, right? So, but the other thing is, so what I say in, I don't know, I'm guessing, 65% of the time when VIX goes up, I think it will benefit your calendar. I think that volatility will be a help mate to your calendar 65% of the time. Even though your biggest determinant of success in a calendar is that if we put it on at the money, <laughs> that, it, that the dog stays in the electric fence, right? Any of you have electric fences for your dogs? Shame on you, I'm joking, all right? I hate electric fences. I hate them. You know why? Because I hate walking through a neighborhood and someone will have a big scary dog, but it's in an electric fence. And I always look, I said, you know what? If he wants, if he wants a piece of roast beef out of me, right? He'll he'll endure a little bit of pain. Right. Now, so 65% of the time. Will you get some benefit if volatility goes up? Yes. But 35% of the time, right? I'm just giving you based on my experience. If SPX drops too fast, what do you mean too fast? Like right now we're down, we're down 1% in SPX, right? We're down 45 points. So if SPX drops, starts dropping, I'm just giving you a guideline. You ready? 1% 1, 1 or more in a day. That's a little bit of speed, right? We're 41.32 in the SPX right now, down 46. We start getting a little more speed. Then I tell you, right, hey, don't expect the volatility to help you, my friend. And you say back to me, Dan, my friend, why not? Because when you start getting speed to the downside, right? 
specifically, your the volatility or premium or extrinsic value of your short options will increase more than the extrinsic value or premium or volatility of your long options, right? So that's just the way it is. So there's a working, you have one, you know, people are thinking, well, volatility goes up, that helps account. Whoa, 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 wait. That's a theoretical calculation. But in reality, when the market goes down fast, in maybe 35% of instances, when the SPX is down, again, I'm giving you just rough, rough guidelines, goes up 1% or more, right? And, 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 you know, what's a way, what I would encourage you, if you're interested in calendars or mixed month spreads, and you want to understand them better, right? Let me give you a little, uh, I want to be done here in about five minutes, but I'll give you a couple of guidelines. Anytime you put a calendar on, if you want to learn, if you want to become a good craftsman, write down the price of the underline, write down your Greeks, your Delta, Gamma, Theta, Vega, price the underline, write down what you paid for the calendar, but then write down the volatility of your long and your short. So that way you can see what happens. Okay. I did a calendar. The next day, the market drops 100 points. Oh, now I see what Dan's saying. The volatility of my short went up two points. Volatility of my long only went up three quarters. Oh, right? But you've got to follow that. Now, just because we run up quickly in the market, anybody ever do something like this? So let's just say we're at 41.33. All right. And I had this calendar 4140, pretty close. Generally, when you put an at the money calendar on, your deltas will be close to zero. So sometimes what I like to do is if I think, again, not being real directional, but call me crazy, we've been up 300 points, you know, more than we should. I'd rather just trade a tinge not bearish, a tinge to the short side. So if this is a calendar, I might diagonalize it and just take my long strike and the calls and go five points higher. And that just gives me a, just a little bit of short delta. I'm still delta neutral within a delta or, two or so, but I'm just going with where I think we might go. And if we go the other way, that's okay. I just adjust or something. But has anybody ever done that? I would call this diagonalizing a calendar. Dan, explain. Same as a calendar, I'm buying the, far, it's a mixed month spread. I'm buying the further out, selling the closer in, right? But I might sell my at the money call, but then the call I'm supposed to buy in a calendar, the same strike, I'll just go five points higher or 10, five points. Has anybody ever done one of those? Anybody? Going once, going twice. All right. And, and again, when would I do a diagonal calendar versus a calendar? In this case, to get me a little bit short deltas, I would do one when I had maybe for the next two or three days. I think we have a chance to go down a little bit, right? Now, if we go up, I can adjust it and everything. That's fine. Anyways. I think I will cut it off here. How many did I at least, my, my attempt was at least to confuse you a little bit today. How many did I do a good job of confusing you on a very confusing topic, skews and calendars? Good, that's all I wanted to do. Screw you up a little bit before the end of the day. Um, if you want, you know, um, we just finished two, classes. Uh, we do our monthly 3K class, which is basically Mark Fenton, who works with me and myself, will we'll do live trading and teach you uh, day by day for four weeks, exactly how we do it here at Sheridan Mentoring, put the trades in. And then 
uh, we started the same day class for all the for all the folk, uh, the type A personalities who are addicted to short term trades. We have a class for that. So we just finished both of them. Next week is a week off for all of us. I mean, a week to between classes. And then the week after next, Tuesdays and Thursdays, we'll do the 3K. And then we do the same day. Um, like from information, you could just go to Shared and Mentoring. There should be a sign up on there or in more information. Or if you have any questions, you can email me, dan at sharedandmentoring.com. But I think those would be helpful classes and help you become a craftsman. And the good thing is we're, we're, we're thinking through like we did today on a day-to-day -day basis, doing the craft, how to do the craft, but we're doing all live, live trades, monitoring the P&L. And uh, so anyways, um, that's what we'll be, that's what we'll be doing. And um, uh, but uh, hope you uh, enjoyed it today. And again, it's thinking through these things, you know, this is a craft, right? And I think the more you do it and understand it, you'll get better at it. So have a nice weekend, everybody. Appreciate it. And uh, see you later. Thanks.